What disgusting secrets does your employer keep from its customers? I worked for a gelato shop that made us dig through the so-called recycling bins to fish out used plastic cups and spoons to wash and give to new customers. Even if the spoons had bite marks from other customers and were coated in chewing gum, we were told to wash them up and only throw them out if they were really unpresentable, because these things are expensive furthermore. All the other stuff in the recycling bin that people so good-heartedly placed there, yet, yeah, all of it got thrown in the dumpster. Customers ate IT up and told us regularly how glad they were that we are a green business who cares about the environment enough to recycle. It didn't take long before I just couldn't keep doing this with a clean conscience, and I turned them into the health inspectors, who were absolutely horrified this was happening. About two months later, I got laid off and the business closed its filthy doors forever. Also, I work in a similar business. I get 1000 spoons for less than $10. They probably paid more in labor for people washing the things than it would cost to buy fresh spoons. The fajitas sizzle because we pour oil and water on a hot plate not because we grilled anything. I once tempied at a customer survey marketing firm when they tested a variety of coffee and lattes from a popular Canadian chain. The studies showed that the customers rated the beverage higher if they heard the milk being steamed. No milk was ever being steamed. The machine just made that noise. Former employer was charging clients for a one backup solution that wasn't even running. I was still actively developing it when I quit. Client called up and asked to see the records of the backup. I said it wasn't running and that we didn't have any to my knowledge. Client flips out. Calls boss. Boss flips out at me for not lying. Frick that crap. And this is why restore tests are so vitally important. Still, selling something that doesn't exist. Whoa. I used to work in a major movie theater and we would recycle hot dogs. Basically, if the links were on the spinning rack all day and didn't get purchased, they would be thrown in a bucket and refrozen. We poked a fork hole in one to see how long it would stay in rotation. 7. Fricking. Days. I remember I saw an orange Julius open once. The guy opened up the storefront and walked over to the hot dog roller and switched it on. There were already three dogs in there. Worked for a self storage place in Rocklin, CA. They made every customer sign a lease agreement that said that you wouldn't hold them responsible if your unit was broken into and things were stolen. I found out that we had 7 8 burglaries a year. The owners would get sued but they would always get off because they'd produce the lease agreement in court and the judge would dismiss the case. One day I came in from vacation to pick up my paycheck, and I found the owner and the manager loading up a truck with the contents from a unit that wasn't theirs. I went around the corner to an area where the fence allowed me to look in, and saw that they went to another storage space, cut off the lock, and proceeded to load up the truck with a telescope big screen tv and some power tools i came back the next day and asked one of my co-workers he told me that the owners of the storage space would sell the stuff they stole from renters and that the manager and owner did the same thing with another property that they owned in granite bay i quit to go back to sac state i called the rocklin cops to tell them what the owners were doing and they said that there was nothing they could do unless they were caught in the act tim horton smile cookers Pay an extra dollar for a chocolate chunk cookie with a smile drawn on it all proceeds go to local charity. Unfortunately store owner would just go into the system, void all cookie sales and replace with regular chocolate chunk cookie sales. I want to know where this is. No one fricks with my smile cookies. A small business owner for whom I worked several years ago kept deducting the employee's health insurance premiums but never sent the payments into the carrier. After 2-3 months of this, our insurance was cancelled. Right before one lady's teenage son was in a fairly serious car accident, she finds out at the emergency room, during what is of course an extremely stressful time, that she has no insurance whatsoever when she and her dependents had been fully covered. The next day she went into his office, very upset, to find out what happened. He gave his usual song and dance and made excuses for not having been able to send it in, and this normally mild-mannered lady picked up a stapler and threw it at him, he wasn't even injured, while doing that was of course unacceptable. I totally understood her frustration with this weasel. He spent thousands of dollars a month of company money, coding it to company expenses, at Sam's Club on groceries and big ticket items for his house, on top of his already generous salary. Then to top it all off, 
he actually took her to court for the stapler throwing incident. After hearing the story, the judge dismissed the weasel's case and made a comment to the effect that if he were in the same position as her, he probably would have done the same thing. Used to sell cars at a major dealership. The unofficial sales contest was to see how much over MSRP they could sell the car for by confusing the customer on the price with payments financing, manipulation of trade value and sometimes outright fraud, like promising manufacturer rebates then not applying them. The winner for the two months I was there was over by $10k, selling a car that should have been $20k for over $30k. The sad part is the customer might never even know because they still got the payment they wanted. Please do yourselves a favor and don't shop solely based on payments and if you are financing then make sure you are aware what the final selling price of the car is. There is a major difference between $400 MTH at 60 months at 0% interest and $400 per month at 84 months at 0.9%. I used to work at Frisch's as a hostess busser drive through attendant. That place was filthy and corrupt as frick. No one in the kitchen wore gloves and the cooks loved making people eat old food food that had been dropped on the disgusting floors. The manager loved to steal the waitresses tips and blame the customers or the sketchy looking buses. The most corrupt thing the awful manager did while I was there was around Christmas time. He would take $100 out of each of the new younger employees cash drawer. Call your parents saying that their kids stole the money and they needed to be brought in to be questioned. When I went to work the next day I found out the same crap happened to a few of the others. We all got pee and snagged the key that locked the box to the camera controls. Ray winded to the following day and watched until we saw the sucker start doing his thing. Every single one of us reported his ass. He got insta fired. It was glorious. I do music for various media around Tokyo. From big corporations to sketchy dirty production basement deals. Sometimes I walk by a shooting or get a glimpse of an active set. I've seen some pee work as well. Not as exciting to experience as some may imagine. Once I witnessed a director, who is notorious for being a poopy butthole, threaten an actress that if she continued with her gloomy face during the shootings he would take her child away as he slapped her on her head. It was all very serious and cold. The look on her face as she quietly agreed with him ate into my very being. Then I thought how in a few weeks hundreds of people will sexually get off to her in that state without actually being aware of the reality of the situation. Seeing P again after that I can't help but look into the eyes of the girls and wonder what's really going on. I sure felt disgusted getting paid by the same company. We charge $150 labor to replace a battery on a laptop. We charge $200 for a service call to determine that the battery is fricked. Then another $200 to come back with the proper batteries. I worked for a vet in Vancouver and I ran a whole month of raffles. Nail cuttings for donations and pet pics with Santa for the SPCA. When we added up the last of the money from the month, I put it in the safe. The practice owner's wife deposited the money and bought herself some new Chanel makeup. WTF. I quit in disgust. I worked at Betford.com. A British gambling company that received two Queen's Award for Enterprise. It operates a world only decent sports betting exchange. We lost all of our customers credit card details and didn't tell them. Our exchange was broken by a rogue programmer who managed to bypass all the account balance checks and bet millions on a horse race a while ago. Oh sweet Jesus. I think I can hear the Daily Mail's comment section already. I work at a frozen yogurt shop where the raspberries are always moldy and when bugs get caught in the toppings, I have to fish them out and leave the topping there. We have a roach problem, and gnats are everywhere. Customers can see the gnats flying around the salads, fruits, and pies we have out but I guess it doesn't disgust them enough to not come back. More than a few times customers have complained about bugs in their drinks that ended up there after they died in our ice machine. The worst was a live cockroach in someone's salad that was on the fork as they went to take a bite. Whole cooked turkey breasts and roast beefs have been dropped on the floor and served without any of the managers and employees giving two fricks. I've realized most restaurants are so much more dirty than shown, but I've eaten out my whole life. I guess my consolation is that I'm probably building up some immunities to all the Ikes out there. I used to work for a local children's charity where a good majority of the money was skimmed to pay for the owners for profit business. Sears. 
pushed and encouraged to sign you up for things without the customer's consent. Phone number and email is all we need to sign you up for Shop Your Way Rewards. WI Thor without your consent we will do it. DM tells managers to tell us to do it because it has worked so well in other stores to keep numbers up. Wells Fargo, all around shady, straight up lie to people to get them over to a banker to open up checking accounts by telling them our policies are changing and they have to do this. Making sure they have every single product whether it will actually benefit you or not. We will not give up until you have them all. One time a blind lady came up to my window with three separate checking accounts under her name and she didn't even know why she had them. It turns out a banker had opened them all up for her to meet quota. So once I quit WF, I moved all of my accounts elsewhere. I just want to say that if you have ever worked at a water park, it will turn you off of visiting any kind of public pool or park for the rest of your life. The crap we pulled out of those filters, man. No, just pour so many chemicals into the water that literally nothing can live in it and call it a day. Macy's doesn't donate crap to charities. They practically force their employees to and claim it as company donation. I worked at Dairy Queen. The collection box supporting children with cancer hanging out the drive through window was a discontinued charity. My manager pocketed all the donations. Disgusting in a different sense. A nice story to balance it. The McDonald's I worked at didn't even have the key to open the charity boxes. The only person who did is a man from the charity, who takes every last penny for its intended cause once a month or so. My last job we held events and refilled premium liquor with house crap, and during events charge consumption tabs with 100 plus people, extra shots and bottles that were never ordered so the event holder can pay for something never even used at the end of the night, and that's just scratching the surface. My boss refuses to hire anybody but white women, and he uses rubbing alcohol to wipe the expiration date off of product if it expires. He just puts it back on the shelf, including dairy product. I hate him. I won't purchase anything that doesn't have an expiration date, especially things that normally have them. This happened years ago but I was a receptionist for a chiropractor for about 6 months. One day our first appointment came in, I went in the back to look for him. I walked in on him having sex with a co-worker on the table. The same table the patient sometimes would lay face down on. I went back to the front and said, he'll be with you in a couple minutes. God I was disgusted. He was married with two young kids. I didn't work there long after that. Worked store security. There are peepholes above the ladies changing rooms at several major retailers. Supposed to be for female security agents to monitor the dressing rooms, but we had no female security agents. Lots of creepy verism fapping going on. That's definitely illegal. Private company I no longer work for. The company list of vehicles included two four wheelers, a Corvette, a Hummer 2, a brand new Jeep, and oh right, a 20 feet fishing boat. Also frequently bought company furniture which he would then sell to himself government contractor and a weasel to a certain extent i feel like this should be reported i mean you're dealing with people's tax dollars and waste in government needs to be controlled i work for the state so i see it every day and do what i can to prevent it i worked as a supervisor at a water park and just before inspection by the owner the director had me go around the park and paint all the rusted metal silver to look like new some of those bolts were nearly rusted through and were crucial to the ride's construction. That's not even remotely fun. Seriously report the director. Valley here. I've seen a number of occasions in which rubbing compound was used to cover up mild to moderate scratches. Co-workers have stolen things out of cars. From spare change to a handgun on one occasion. If valet is an option, don't do it. Just want to add, I've never stolen anything out of someone's car. Also, yes, all valet companies are different just like not all restaurants spit in your food. I valeted my car one time. I thought now they won't steal my crap. Wrong they stole lots of crap. Barbers, stylists, hairdressers of Reddit. Has anyone ever sat in your chair with a head so nasty that you didn't even want to touch them? What is your horror story? Long time ago but I had to wash and cut a teenager that hadn't washed his hair in what looked like months. 
Salon policy was to wash after a men's cut and the smell was awful. After his cut, I tried to wet his hair in the shampoo bowl and the water just ran off his hair because of all the oil buildup. I had seen a lot during my years as a stylist but that was the worst experience. Imagining water not being able to penetrate oily hair is the grossest thing I've heard of in this thread. Older ladies that came in for a wash and a water wave that had a helmet of hairspray of 4 weeks old was pretty normal. Had one client that had really bad psoriasis and no hairdresser wanted to help him. He was also very ashamed, so we made the deal that he could come in after closing time. It was really bad and most of the equipment, combs, clips ex, were disposed instead of disinfected. As someone with this condition thank you for not turning him away. It's not contagious at all, but can freak the heck out of people. I've been lucky that when mine has been pretty bad on my scalp my hairdressers were still okay with working with me, but I think the longer hair helps mask the problem a bit. My sister is a hairstylist and got scabies once from a kid. Apparently the mom knew the kid had it too. Just didn't tell my sister until they were leaving. Yuck. My husband is a barber. One day he had a guy come in with dreads, wanting them all shaved off. He parted his dreads, looked at his scalp and noticed it was green. He touched it and saw it ripple. Asked the guy when he'd last washed his hair. He replied about 3 years ago my husband realized the guy's whole scalp was covered in a layer of pus. Sent him straight to A&E to have it drained and treated with antibiotics. Bye. Horror story of mine. I used to babysit for the neighborhood. One day I got these kids that were scratching at their heads after taking them outside but because they were playing in the sandbox together. 13 and 8. I figured that there was sand in their hair and reminded them to shower when they got home. Go to get my hair done the next day. Hair was down to my mid back and I asked for a short bob just below my ears. Halfway through the hairdresser stops and loudly announces to everyone in the shop. People I knew were there. That she could not continue to cut my hair because I had lice. I was so embarrassed. You could have at least taken me to the side and explained instead of making me feel dirty. If I had known I would have dealt with it especially if someone was gonna be dealing with my hair. I still blush when I think back on it. Sound like the time a bank teller shouted at me. I couldn't hear her through the thick glass and tiny holes drilled for her voice that I had bounced to check. The entire lobby heard her because she not only turned on her little microphone, but shouted into it as well. My dad was a hairdresser before he passed. When I was young, I had really bad psoriasis on my scalp. My dad has been the only one to ever cut my hair. Passed 3 months ago, and I can't bring myself to get my hair cut, even though it's desperately needed, in my 25 years on this planet. And I can remember a few times sitting in his chair where he was literally combing and cutting out large chunks of dead, flacky skin. It was the most embarrassed I have ever been in front of him. Because no matter how many topical remedies I tried, I couldn't get it to go away. Eventually grew out of the psoriasis, but I still hold on to this moment as one of my favorite moments. Where the love my dad had for me really shone through. My mother was a hairdresser in the 1960s for Vidal Sassen. During the time of the beehive, customers wouldn't wash their hair for weeks. They'd just keep spraying it to keep it in place as it was such a complicated do. This meant a lot of fleas, lice, and on one occasion cockroaches that had to be washed out. For some reason this never bothered my mother all that much, but hearing about it made sure I never, ever wanted any kind of hands-on customer service job. I used to work as a receptionist at a high-end salon. One day, a lady called and asked if we had anyone who specialized in cutting curly hair. I matched her up with someone, asked the standard questions, and made the appointment, which turned out to be for her granddaughter. When the family showed up, the mother and grandmother were white, and the granddaughter was African American. They obviously didn't know, and didn't bother to learn, how to take care of the girl's hair, because it was in a giant, waist-length ponytail that was completely matted. She also had a bit of a developmental disability, and they claimed she would not wash her hair herself. I could smell her as soon as she walked in, but when the stylist got her hair wet at the shampoo bowl, the smell quickly permeated the entire salon. It was like a punch to the gut. The hair stylist had to keep coming up front for fresh air. 
She said giant flakes sheets of dandruff and buildup were basically crusted to the girl's scalp and threw out her hair. The matted ponytail was the worst of it. What should have been a simple 45 minute service ended up taking over 4 hours. The girl looked great when she was done. I felt terrible for her because it was pretty obvious that her mom and grandma had no intention of keeping her hair maintained. I got the impression that they basically only took her for a haircut when things got completely out of control. I was horrified that they apparently weren't even bothering to wash her hair at home. They bought a bunch of products that the stylist recommended, but ended up returning everything a day or two later. That poor child. My hairdresser says she had one lady who brought her kid in for haircuts and the mom never brushed the kid's hair ever, so my hairdresser had to spend upwards of 45 minutes trying to comb the knots out of a squirming kid's hair. I think she eventually fired the client because it wasn't worth the cost of a kid's haircut to spend the better part of an hour just on combing. We had that happen in a salon that I worked in. Because of the way that the mom treated the little girl, we ended up calling CPS. I left that job before I ever saw any resolution, though, I think about that little girl all the time. I had a young man come in with his mother, he was about 8 years old and had tight curly hair. His mother asked me to shave down to a 000000 that is the shortest you can go with clippers. I said sure it was my last cut of the day and I was eager to go home. I start the service and notice barely one stroke 3rd in that he had a lice infestation under the tight curly hair. I mean these guys were huge, probably why his mother needed me to shave it off. So, I discontinued the service and spent the next 3 hours disinfecting everything in sight. The boy's mother called the barbershop later to complain because I wouldn't finish shaving her son's hair. We tried to explain that it was illegal for us to continue the service as it might spread lice to others and recommended a specialty shop that could take care of this for them but she demanded that it was because we were racist. That was fun. I once had to turn a lady away after she booked in for hair extension removal. The micro bonded type your stylist should tell you last 3 months maximum. Nobody told this lady. They had been in for 7 months. My boss booked her in with me. The extensions weren't done in my salon. I took one look at it and told her I couldn't help. There was a chunk of hair about 6 inches wide that was matted with bits of hair glue. Not what we use. Poking out. To me her options were shave it or cut it almost to the scalp. Some hairdressers shouldn't be allowed. Bit of a different horror story, but my stylist once had a woman with hair past her butt who wanted to donate everything to Locks of Love. Everything. This woman with hair down nearly to her thighs says she wants a pixie cut, and is donating everything else. After checking multiple times to see that she was positive she wanted a pixie, and not a short bob or anything, the stylist starts cutting. The woman sobbed the entire time, like... Shoulder shuddering sobs in the dressing chair with her sad little haircut cape on. Stylus kept asking if it was okay, but the woman was determined to help people with cancer, and told her to keep going and to ignore her tears. My stylus said it was the most awkward experience of her life. Other customers kept coming in and probably assumed she was maiming this poor woman. Side story, when you donate hair to locks of love the hair doesn't go to cancer patients it goes to make high end wigs that are sold in the proceeds of the sale go to buy wigs for cancer patients. Not that this is bad, just the fact. One of the first shops I worked in there were two individuals who would regularly come in for cuts. Both of them were physically so dirty it changed their skin tone, and they absolutely reeked of cat pee. Being close to them made my eyes water, and it was extremely difficult to breathe as the smell of ammonia was just plain overwhelming. We never turned them away, and we were always as polite as we could be. But frick if those haircuts didn't feel like they lasted 3 hours. I've always heard that meth users often give off an ammonia cat pee smell. I'm not a stylist for humans but I do groom dogs and I have seen some things that make me want to never give these dogs back to their owners. My worst experience was when I had someone bring in their 2 year old she teased you. She was down as a mini groom. That's where we only trim the face, feet, and private areas, so I'm thinking this will be an easy groom. Wrong. This woman walked in with her dog wrapped in a towel because she doesn't want to touch him and I can see why the dog is a mess. The dog's hair is one solid mat including his face and there is a deep giant hole in his coat where the poop has exploded through his hair meaning he has been pooping into his own hair for so long the build up finally busted a hole through his hair. 
so I have to shave him before he can get any kind of bath so I find a spot I can break through and start shaving. This is very bad on my tools by the way, once I finally release this dog from his mat prison, which came off almost in one solid piece he ends up having so many sores on his skin. He was shaking his head so much he was starting to cause hematomas on his ears. His butthole was infected and he is infested with fleas. I'm so upset at this point I feel so terrible for this poor dog but all I can do is bathe him. Get rid of the fleas and inform the owner that he needs to go to the vet. Bro, I didn't even think about pet grooming. I bet that can get crazy. I feel bad every time I take my dog to the groomer and there's a small mat somewhere. My cousin is a hairdresser. One time a woman brought in her special needs son. He had some hygiene issues and his ears were covered in blackheads. While all the other hairdressers recoiled in horror. My cousin gritted her teeth and gave that kid the best haircut she could. I really respected my cousin after that. That poor kid. I wonder if his mom just ignored it or if she couldn't do anything about it because of his condition. Way back in the day, my mom was a hairdresser. She told me a story once of this guy coming in who had bird poo all over the top back of his head. I guess he got pooped on and didn't notice or something. When I was an assistant at my first salon right out of school we had classes every Wednesday night. Well one week I couldn't find a model in time so my mentor had someone she knew come in and be my model. So the model comes in, seems perfectly normal. She sits in my chair I start the consultation and start looking through her hair to see what I'd need to do. Apparently this young lady had not washed her hair in what I'm assuming was weeks because her hair was so greasy that every time I touched her hair my hand came back drenched in grease. And the smell. Oh man I'll never forget that smell. It was the worst thing I've ever had the displeasure of working with. I asked my mentor if I could shampoo her before starting and was told that I couldn't. So here I am working on this girl who almost literally has grease dripping from her hair. I must have washed my hands 10 times that night. Needless to say I had my own model for every class after that one. When my sister was young, elementary school aged, she didn't like to brush her thick hair and it was always a source of grief. My mom took her to get her hair cut and after the hairdresser tried to brush her hair for a minute she said that, sister, needed to brush it herself. So my sister had to sit in the lobby with a brush until the tangles were gone. It was some pretty effective social shaming. LOL. I hated brushing my hair as a kid, but it never got that bad. If it had, I'm pretty sure my mother would have just cut it all off herself. I'm a hairstylist, pretty new still, in school, you can't really turn anyone away, I had a prostitute sit in my chair, tweaked out of her freaking mind, with her pimp telling us to dye her stringy, fried hair blonde and cut it to her chin, she didn't speak for herself at all, she wouldn't even look in the mirror, he gave all the instructions, he definitely had a specific look for her in mind. He was a huge butthole to everyone and she left the chair to go cry in the bathroom. A classmate went to go check on her and she had just walked out of the door. He left really quick after that. I think about her sometimes and I hope she's okay. I wish I had gotten the chance to make her feel beautiful. So that was a pretty nasty experience even though I didn't have a chance to start the service. Besides that, I was pregnant throughout school and gagged quite a bit of the ladies who would come in for a wash, blow dry, and style after weeks of not brushing out their hair or washing it. I always suggested braids for these ladies since they obviously for whatever reason chose not to maintain their naturally curly hair but most refused and would be back in 3-4 weeks for the whole process again. This was a very time consuming process with tons of detangling rats nests and dreads that invariably ended in zero tips. There were also really creepy men that would come in for $5 cuts and say very sexual things and enjoyed the shampoo a lot. My school was basically just a mill of free labor and we had to accept every client no matter what and it sucked. But I'm enjoying more creative freedom now that I have graduated and I'm in a salon. I still volunteer for events where the homeless get free cuts and there are quite a few very dirty people there but I don't mind because it's not a daily basis situation like it used to be and I like making people feel good. If you are even remotely thinking that a customer is under the influence of a pimp call the cops, he is human trafficking. 1-800-373-7888 National Human Trafficking Resource Center What's the worst smell that you've ever experienced? My mom had bought farm fresh eggs one week. 
I remember grabbing one to fry and make an egg sandwich. I heated up the pan and cracked the egg in there. What came out of the egg was a black rotten mess that smelled of pure evil. I threw up like a second after smelling the rotten egg and seeing the black mess writhe and heave in the pan. My puke went all over the frying pan and stove creating a horrible fusion of fried rotten egg and sick. That was the worst smell I've ever smelt. I'm guessing you wouldn't like the Chinese delicacy thousand year old eggs, then. The burn unit of a hospital. Burnt flesh and disinfectant. Unforgettable. Yes. I was an intern and attended surgeries, where they amputated legs and welded the end of the arteries. The smell of burned human flesh is so disgusting. Tonsil stones. Dang that crap's nasty. Those friggin bile fossils are disgusting. My roommate once kept one in a tiny bottle and would waft it under sleeping people noses. I feel sick just thinking about it. Opening of an exhumed coffin. 6 months. You can't describe it. Death and decay. It's a smell that lingers. It stays in your nose for hours. Also pretty bad. Butyric acid. Recreated that scene from Family Guy where everyone is puking. In my kitchen with my husband, myself and my child after finding 4 plus month old rotten chicken in a Tupperware that had fallen down behind the drawer in my fridge. I don't know why I opened it. It was like opening a portal to stench heck. The smell was indescribable. It demanded you vomit. You had no choice. I puked so much I felt like my stomach had been turned inside out and scrubbed with steel wool. Okay. I'll bite. I've worked in a wide number of medical settings. And smelled it all. Vomit. Crap. Raspy abscesses. Gas forming anaerobic bacteria. That one can knock you down. Dead bodies that have been baking for a while. And nothing compared to a Doberman Pinscher who swallowed an entire bedspread hole. I was working my way through college as a vet assistant at the time. I am not joking, exaggerating or making this up. I have no photos. This was long before cell phone cameras. This dog was really neurotic. And her parents were getting a divorce. Somehow, she had managed to work down an entire at least double sized bedspread in one piece. We could not understand how she circumvented a gag reflex and didn't choke to death. Mom notices the dog isn't eating, and is a bit bloated, so she brings her in. Her color sucks, and we're thinking stomach torsion, which is a very bad scene for dogs. We open her up, and get nailed by the most god-awful smell we've ever encountered. Rotting, putrid, eye-burning, blow your hair back, way worse than any crap I've ever smelled, or rotting body for that matter. The vet is an old farm boy, he laughed at us while he pulled this sucker out. One of Tex ran out and puked in a sink. We also had a bottle of peppermint oil for the inside of your mask for such instances, and the sucker was empty. I nearly killed the tech who didn't replace it later. It was one of those old chenille bedspreads, with those weird tufts all over it. I would not have believed it if I hadn't seen it for myself. I know you're going to tell me it isn't possible, but we saved the bedspread for the owners to see because they knew they wouldn't believe us either. The dog lived. What I thought was bizarre is that the owners are getting a divorce, so their dog eats their bedspread. Ha. Great story. There was this Benice Mountain dog that lived down the street from me growing up who used to eat full bath towels. I believe on two occasions. Fried cat pee. Let me tell you a tale. When I first moved in with my so. We were also living with another couple who happened to be very good friends of ours. Now my so had a cat, and I had a cat that I had yet to move to our new apartment because I needed to set aside an exorbitant amount of money for the pet fees. Before I could do that, the roommates bought a cat of their own. Now we would have three cats in a two bedroom apartment. Three cats, two of which had never lived together and were male. This meant a knuckle fur apocalypse for four months when I introduced them. They hated each other. My so's cat took to using the restroom in strange places out of stress. And one day he decided to climb up onto the counter and pee on the toaster. Yes, he pee on the toaster. So one day one of us went to make a bagel and suddenly realized something was wrong. Were we being attacked by terrorists? This had to be mustard gas or some biological agent meant for mass murder. Try to imagine cat pee that has sat for at least several hours. And then think about reheating it to reactivate its pungent nature. Our house smelled like some kind of hateful acid gas for several days. And that was the worst smell I've ever encountered. I love this story for the mental imagery of a cat contently taking a pee on a toaster. 
rotting potatoes. It's a disgusting cross between a skunk spray, a dead animal, and crap. It's a toss-up between rotting potatoes and sour chocolate milk for me, but the potatoes are pretty dang bad. Found one so rotten that it had turned into a black liquid. I have a strong stomach but I could not clean that mess up. A 5 plus year old egg that was hidden for Easter that my friend found and threw on our basketball court. I threw up for an hour, not lying. Here's hoping that, afterward, you threw your friend on the basketball court. I was a plumber for 25 years. I have encountered numerous odiferous offenders including dead bodies, rotting animals in sewers and attics, grease traps, sewer filled basement rooms and more grunoffs. The most memorable smell for pure unadulterated offense to my olfactory senses is the smell from inside a soda station drain system, inside any fast food restaurant you want. When I was an electrician we had the massive Mickey Mouse looking rubber gloves. One time my co-worker found a dead bat and put it in my rubber glove. It was in my job box for the weekend and just turned to stew. Monday morning he pretended like he had an emergency and yelled get your gear on now so I ran over, ignored the smell, and forced my glove on, spraying dead bat juice all over my chest and face. Literally everyone threw up. An MTE train car at rush hour. It smelled like a planet made of crap, powered by a sour milk sun, with an atmosphere full of pea clouds. I know that smell exactly. I love when conditions are just right in the summer to create that blue feta cheese smell. OMG. Several years ago now, during my plumbing apprenticeship schooling, our instructors took us on a tour of the wastewater treatment facility in our city. Suffice to say, it was the most disgusting smell I've ever experienced. I don't know how people work there. My clothes stunk when I got home from school. I actually ended up throwing out the sweater I had been wearing. Even after a wash it still smelled like raw sewage. There's nothing quite like the poignant aroma of a city of 1.2 million people's sewage. I can only imagine what it must be like in some older cities of the world. Places with 10 or 20 or 30 million people. Disgusting. Good thing I'm not in the field any longer. Your good friend. When I was a teenager, I think about 14, maybe 15, my grandfather was supposed to come over for dinner, but he never showed up. My dad called him and he answered the phone, said he wasn't feeling well, and we said we'd just do it next weekend. Unfortunately he died that night, and since he lived alone in a remote area no one found out. The next weekend comes along, and he doesn't show up again, and again my dad calls, but no answer. Him not answering the phone was a common thing. We assumed he wasn't feeling well and let it be. But after he hadn't returned the message for a few more days, we went up to his house to check on the old man. Welp. We walked into the house, and there he was, in his chair, TV on, dead over a week, middle of summer, no windows open or air conditioning. I will never, ever forget that smell. It was kind of sickly sweet, but in a very very wrong way. I don't know how to explain it. But frick me was it terrible. People soup. Usually when someone dies in the bathtub or shower at home, or any body of water, really, and decomposition takes its course, they're much quicker to ripen during the summer. Hawkeye just threw up in my mouth thinking of it. Sometimes I really don't like my job. You never forget the smell of a hoarder's house, especially one that has cats. The cats used the shower as their litter box. The house was infested with roaches. There was rotting food in the kitchen, and I was forced to spend a night. Visiting my grandma's farm as a child was awesome and it made everyday normal games so much more fun there. One day, my sister and I were playing kitchen outside and I got a hold of what I thought was a fake egg. On accident, I dropped this egg and instead of it bouncing like plastic, it exploded and let this rancid mind clouding awful smell onto the porch and into the rest of the house. Apparently the farm was home to wild ducks and this egg had been confiscated from its nest and somehow ended up on the porch. I have never wanted to not breath so much in my life. I don't drop eggs anymore. My dog once managed to get a jar of horseradish open. He ate the entire contents. Describing the smell of his farts crap would never come close to the reality. Grease traps. I worked at a cafe that would hire people to clean the grease traps during the lunch rush. I sit next to this girl in two of my classes, and she always has deadly breath. What's worse is she never sleeps enough, 
so she is constantly tired and therefore yawns all the time. Every time I hear her yawn all I can do is brace myself for the eye-watering pungent odor that's going to hit me in a few seconds. Not the worst smell, but perpetually terrible and there's nothing I feel comfortable doing about it. And before you guys suggest offering gum, I've done that a few times and she never takes it. A bed saw roughly the size of a basketball. Absolutely putrid. Close second is about 150 pounds of goat cheese that sat in a dumpster in 90 degree heat for a good week and a half. Surströming or something like that a Swedish specialty. It's fermented fish and it stinks like heck. Lived here over 5 years and have yet to smell it. It's the stuff of legends. A thousand pounds of burning sugar at a molasses factory. Honestly, a stink bomb. Crap's freaking disgusting. After Hurricane Katrina, I went with a relief group to clear homes. This meant taking everything out, trashing it, and tearing the house down to the studs. We went in July the year after, and the house we had was owned by a former catering business owner. He had three industrial sized freezers in the garage that had been flooded, and baking for nearly a year. We couldn't get into the garage through the house, and had to break down the garage door. The smell that came from that place was enough to make everyone in our group literally vomit. Grown men doubling over even before the door was down. The freezers had been full of beef and pork, then turned into a soup with flood waters, then boiled in 100 plus degree temps for a year. Two stroke 10 would not smell again. I got to know those smells well myself. Thanks for coming down, though. I used to work at an animal hospital. One early morning after taking my coat off a co-worker pulls me aside and says, Hey, I need your help with something outside. Right away I knew it was bad. The only thing we keep outside are hoses. Pooper scoopers in the freezer. The freezer is where we keep recently dead euthanized pets before they are taken by a pet cemetery service. They come every Tuesday to empty the freezer. It's Tuesday. Outside the driver of the removal truck is smiling nervously in front of the padlocked freezer. But something reeks. It wasn't so bad. We pop it open and witness one of the few spectacles that I might never forget. The freezer light which is designed to turn off when the door closes has malfunctioned. It has remained lit for days. Not only burning the plastic body bags containing the carcasses but also burning large amounts of fur and cooking some flesh. It was the most putrid and outright dizzyingly disgusting odor I've ever come across. The combination of burnt, rotting flesh, singed fur, and melted plastic created a potpourri of the most vile stenches known to man. My disgust is plastered on my face as I stare into the frozen stink tub. I look up at the truck driver and he grins, chuckling. That'll wake you up in the morning. I got a valet with the worst BO of all time. Attached to my clothes, infected my friend Elaine. Got my car detailed. Didn't help. I had to sell my car. The beast. Nice try, Seinfeld. Maybe not the worst ever but the most powerful was taking one step into the leather factory in Fez, Morocco. When he opens the door the smell almost knocks you out and you wonder how are all those people actually working in there. I was repairing the phone lines in a leather factory. It's a smell that lingers for weeks. A dumpster filled with old deep fryer oil. The phlegm I was regularly coughing up when I had pneumonia. My girlfriend said I smelled like the Crypt Keeper. I went to recycle the aluminum cans from my grandfather's bar. The entire shed behind the bar was full. 50-60 garbage bags, full of cans. Must have been 5-6 months worth. It was the end of summer, so the bags had been there through the heat of summer. The smell of moldy beer, baking in the summer heat, with basically zero ventilation, was easily one of the foulest smells I've ever encountered. That was 10 years ago and I still remember how putrid the stench was. Anyone who owns a bar has probably dealt with this at some point. The worst part was probably dripping beer juice on my hands arms. It took everything I had not to vomit continuously through the entirety of the day. But I know he appreciated it, so I suppose it was worth it. I cooked a big ass leg of beef for our 30th birthday. I was 45 kilograms of age goodness that I spit roasted over a charcoal fire. The party was in the woods and once everyone had eaten their fill, we put the remaining half a leg into the back of my cousin's van to stop foxes getting at it. I was so hungover that I totally forgot about it until mid-afternoon the next day. It had been festering in there at a perfect 30-40 C all day and was turning green. 
very much like me when I opened the door. A large amount of rotten meat is quite hard to get rid of as it is classed as toxic waste so I had to chop it up and bury it in various places. I hurled several times and ran a fairly good chance of getting arrested on suspicion of murder. Not sure if it was the worst smell or the worst state I have been in smelling something bad. The bottom. Backside. Underside. Adjoining sewer drain of a dumpster at the fast food joint I used to work at. We had corporate coming in for an inspection and my boss thought of the most asinine places to clean up. Places they would never look or even think about. One of those places? Underneath the dumpster. You know. Just in case Bruce Banner was on the inspection team and decided to lift the dumpster for a quick peek. He assigned an assistant manager, myself, and two other guys to the task. We had to come in at 4.45am on Saturday, when the garbage company came by, to ask them to leave the dumpster out of the bay so we could pressure wash and scrub it clean. Shoulder seen the look on that guy's face. Something akin to why you sure you want to do that and you poor bastards. They pulled out the dumpster and just, I can't describe. There was a drain underneath which helped, sort of. It was just years of caked up food and animal waste, several dead rats and other animals, and some live ones which scurried off. We couldn't pressure wash it. We had to get shovels and just start picking up and dumping it, well into the dumpster. Where else? After about an hour and a half of shoveling, raking, and scrubbing it was clear enough of thick layers that pressure washing actually did something. Not even the longest or dirtiest day of my working life, but definitely the smelliest. Dead people in summer, 96 hours decomposing. Dead people in summer, this sounds like a great song. A raccoon died in our attic, and the stench traveled throughout the entire house, sickening. I worked in my dad's company, and one of the things we would do regularly was to clean and empty grease traps. We got to a Chinese restaurant where that was this grease trap in the basement that hadn't been emptied for 8 months. Couple that with the fact that there was 30 degrees down there. Worst smell I've ever encountered. I don't think I've ever been so sick because of a smell before. Went to Alaska. We were driving from Anchorage somewhere down the Kenai Peninsula and saw a dead grey whale washed up. So we decided to stop for a picture. Mother of God. That thing stank like heck from 100 yards away and only got worse as we got closer. I don't remember the smell being that different from a normal rotting animal. Just much much stronger. My roommate. You have a smell it to believe it exists. Nobody can blame their farts on my dog. It didn't wake me from a deep sleep. Give me suicidal urges. And force me out of the house for half an hour. Definitely not a dog fart. The smoldering ruins of the World Trade Center after 9-11. One windy night, the smell drifted up to the Bronx and I started choking and had to shut all of my windows. No wonder a lot of first responders there got cancer. A slightly opened can of cat food that I forgot about. I spent days looking for a dead animal in my house, convinced my cats had dragged one in. But then I found the can, the tab had broken off but I was still able to get in, and it sat for about a week. It was so bad I threw up 3 times, washed my hands 6 times, couldn't get the smell on my fingers off, and I only touched the outside can for about 5 seconds. It was the smell of straight up rotted flesh and death in a can. Worse than a staph infection or an open septic tank. Rotted wet cat food, never again. Onion decaying inside with worms. So, I didn't realize, but I cut an onion and almost fainted. It was all empty from inside with worms and a putrid smell which is worse than a fresh crap taken by a man who ate a decomposing skunk. I smelled it 4 years ago and thinking about it still makes me want to throw up. I once found an old can of fish oil or something whilst cleaning out the garage. My olfactory nerves held a union meeting and went on strike until it was agreed that opening old fricked up things and smelling it was no longer in the negotiated contract. You have been visited by the money b- Massage therapists of Reddit. What are some of your most awkward or disgusting experiences with clients? My mother has been a massage therapist for over 20 years. She's in her 50s, and she loves it. She massages a lot of elderly people, doesn't mind. Massages a few obese people, doesn't mind. To her, people are people, and she's not easily disgusted. But when people proposition her for s, she minds. 
One particularly troubling encounter was when she was massaging a friend's husband, and he thought it would be appropriate to ask for SUAL favors. I had a very eccentric, read, creepy as frick, client who came into our clinic one day wanting a chewy na massage, type of Chinese massage. We usually leave the room to let the client strip down into underwear before we commence, but with this guy I had no chance to get away. Before I had time to give him a towel he dropped his pants to reveal a sparkling blue g-string that barely kept everything in place. The guy was about 58, huge beer gut, grey hair, gold earring, and hairy like Robin Williams. As I started the massage, the guy started to tell me that he worked as an erotic masseur specializing in body slide massage. This is where the masseurs get soiled up and rubs his body and genitals all over before fricking the client at the end. The whole time I was massaging him he kept telling me that I was really good with my hands. He also repeatedly told me how good he was at his job and plugging his business with a hinting tone. A very awkward session. I read this entire post thinking this guy was a pirate. I was getting a massage last week. In the little room next to mine was a talkative old agent. He was chatting away to his massage therapist, then it went quiet. After a little while I heard him whisper, Do. Do you do this for everyone? You got the wrong massage therapist. I've had clients ask if they could massage me, specifically my ass, while I was working on them. One woman tried to put her face in my crotch and told me she would love to eat me out. For the record, I was wearing yoga pants as I am also a yoga instructor. Many people are surprised how strong I am and comment on it and how small my hands are. That's not odd. What was odd was the guy who followed that observation up with telling me that I also had tea like a wolverine. Not sure if that's a good or bad thing. Tea like a wolverine. Oh my god. My mom is a massage therapist. She used to work out of our house. She had a studio downstairs where she would have people over for massages. One day, a woman came over who was probably in her late 60s. Oldish, slightly overweight woman. Now my mom, as is standard procedure, asks this woman to disrobe and get under the covers while my mom waited outside. When she came back in after a few minutes after asking if the woman was done, the woman was standing in the middle of the room completely naked. The woman said honey, I'm sure you've seen more than this in your day. She had not. Call me bubbles darling, everybody does. I'm a massage therapist, doing medical type work. My clients are all super nice, so not many awkward experiences, but I'll share two. One, I came back to change the sheets after one client had gotten dressed and left, and found that he'd had some diarrhea on my table. Luckily our laundry service treats all our linens as biohazards anyway, but yuck. 2. I came into the room after washing my hands and letting my client get undressed, and she realized she hadn't been specific enough about how she'd injured her back. So she got up, stark naked, and proceeded to demonstrate the motion she'd been doing when she hurt herself. Not disgusting, bodies don't scare me, but definitely felt awkward. That's about it. I love my job. I definitely suggest going into massage therapy if you're compassionate and can handle a good amount of physically demanding work. If you're worried about sexual come-ons, stick to medical settings. If you're worried about bodily fluids and or smells, go the spa route. Good luck. My brother is a massage therapist for a side income and has tons of horror stories. One of the strangest ones is a man came to their studio, he shared one with others, and specifically asks for a man. Well, he is left in the room with the typical instructions, undress and get under a sheet. And when my brother comes in, the guy is sitting on a couch cross naked as the day he was born. Anyway, wids out my brother who apologizes and asks him to again get under the sheet and leaves for about 5 minutes. He comes back and begins the massage. Apparently this guy had a huge penis tattooed on his back and kept hinting for more. The guy even started slightly pulling the sheet off his butt with his hands. They were by his sides. And saying things like it's just the two of us in here. What happens here stays here. I wouldn't say anything. Basically all this unnerved my brother a good bit who was all too happy when the guy's time was up. But like a champ he continued to do massages. Although they didn't add that guy to their watch list. Worked as a receptionist for a massage service facility. Every masseuse was licensed and the business was legit. But I guess having an all Asian staff gave creepers the idea that we provide extra services. 
One day a rather large white man requested one of our longest massages. Two hours. Swedish massage. I instructed him to disrobe and lie beneath the bed sheets. Typical procedure. While his massage therapist prepared for the massage. Hand wrist stretching. Hydrating. ETC. He seemed like a decent guy, so I wasn't expecting any trouble until the masses that had just entered the service room stumbled out backwards shouting profanities and slamming the door. Apparently he was sitting stark naked at the edge of the bed with his wang out, upright and at full attention. To make it worse, when the masses walked in and gave him a startled look, he gave her the creepiest smile, according to her anyway, and jumped off the bed as if to approach her. We threatened to call the police and he left though he had already paid for his service so too dang bad for him, handing me his unused towel over the counter and asking me to fold it. Yes, there is at least one massage therapist on Reddit. I've been doing massage for 10 years, have worked on several military bases, Sedona and Lachlan. You see some strange tattoos, some really interesting scars, some insane back hair, smell some pretty nasty feet. If you like helping people, and aren't into it for the money, especially in this economy, then it's definitely worth it. I'm a beauty therapist and do massage too. I once had a girl roughly the same age as me, 20s, come in for a body massage as a present from her boyfriend. Whilst doing the massage I could see the oil looked weird, like a streaky brownish color, and it smelled weird. Well the client smelt weird. After the massage we chatted for a bit and she mentioned that she'd spent the morning fake tanning herself. Looked at my hands and they looked like I had just dipped them in chocolate. So so brown. I then had to explain to her that it wasn't the best idea to do that as she'd now be one big streaky mess. Tan fail. I know some girls have had creepy guys in for massages in the past but luckily I haven't. Nothing exciting to tell though I'm afraid. Although one girl had a guy in for a massage and when she told him the massage was over, he offered her a 20 for special extras. She ran off crying. I'm really starting to think there should be a sign at all places that offer massages. If you in any way ask for a happy ending, you will be promptly removed and our services will no longer be available. There must be places that have this. I was still in school, and I was giving this guy a massage. Towards the end he started shifting around a little and acting a bit awkward. I didn't think much of it, he said it was his first massage, and finished up. As he exited the room, he got all shifty eyed and awkward, and seemed a little embarrassed. He didn't want to talk to me, he just paid as quickly as he could and got out of there. I went back to change the sheets and there was a nice little present sitting under the top sheet, a shiny little globule. I didn't know what it was, though I had an idea, so I leaned over to sniff it just to be sure. Yup, that there was a pile of wow. The worst part? He didn't even tip. Just left something from his tip. That bastard. Why? The frick. Would you smell it? My karate jujitsu instructor is one. Backstory. He is a small guy, and kind of brownish. He walks in late one day and has this odd look on his face. I don't think much of it and we finish the class. As I was about to leave I figured I should ask what was wrong. I did. I regret it. He takes a deep breath and says are you sure you want to know I felt obligated to listen to him. He is a great guy. He then begins to tell me about his day. Everything was fine until his last app. He had. He, in the nicest way possible, described a lady of about 200-300 pounds. She had just got from the gym. I laughed at that part but she's trying so good for her and was wanting to cool down and get relaxed. He said the lady was very nice but he wasn't prepared for the job he was about to take on. He had to give her everything. Massage under the lovely sweaty rolls. Hot rocks. Steam room. This lady had money, but that's not really the bad part. The lady was done with her massaging and the works and went to their bathroom. He said she was in there until just 5-10 minutes before they closed. She left and he said he wanted to wash up. As he was walking towards the bathroom he said he smelt the worst smell. He opens the bathroom and sees this lovely painting made from her crap. Of him. He still doesn't know why he couldn't smell it before and for about a week or two was scared to go to work. They got her picture from the camera. B got her crap back. I. Was not expecting that. Poor guy. Till you're supposed to tip massage therapists. 
Well this is kind of a reverse on the massage therapist weirdo story. My friend recommended a place near me. I go in and this smoking guy comes out and says that he is going to be my therapist for the next hour. Score. However, he had like magic hands or something. I hear how guys can get aroused by massages, but I never thought it could happen to women. Well the weird part comes along as I am having the greatest massage of my life. I feel him lean into me, and he has a giant boner. LOL. I don't know what the proper way to ask for a happy ending is for a woman, but I got a little unnerved. Great massage. Left there a little more frustrated than when I walked in. In that situation I believe it would have been completely proper to bring up the boner, since it just touched you. Had a woman that had explosive diarrhea during the treatment. I didn't know what to do so I ran out of the room. Probably the best thing you could have done. Female therapist here and surprisingly, nothing too creepy or weird, so far, I once had this client, while still in school, who really wanted extra focus work on his toes of all things. After spending my time on his toes, bleg, he wanted glute work pulled his tight shorty shorts down and barred his hairy bum. Not exactly what I was expecting being so innocent and new to the field. Needless to say, I pulled his britches right back up. Since then, I've had a few clients make sexual references, try to give me hugs afterward. You know blatant here's my penis, you know what to do with it sort of things. A lot of boners though. Every day, all day, all I see is a clock and boners. Alas, I do love my job. It's easy but hard work at the same time. Very rewarding. I think it depends on where you work what area of town and who you're employed by. But I personally love what I do. Not a massage therapist, but when one of my friend's brother was 15, he looks much older. The masseurs tried to give him a handy. He said number the masseurs said yes. He threatened her and she finished the massage in peace. It's worth making it a career choice if you have the feel and the passion for it. If you're looking at it just as a money making job, you're better off doing something else. The money is no huge reward for all the effort you need to put into it. If you want to become good and have repeat clients and not rip people off. That said, the worst I've had to put up with was a huge guy in his 60s. He was like fat bastard, only old. He says please don't use any scented oils on me. I have to go to a construction site after this. No worries. Halfway through the massage he turns or moves and the towel half comes off. He's wearing a black lacy g-string. I never wtf as much as in that moment. This thread has reminded me of the last time I got a deep back massage. I've had them in the UK and never been nude, but this was on holiday in Croatia, at the hotel spa. But the lady masseurs popped out of the room while I got onto the table and obs I took my top off, but left on my bikini pants. I don't really have an issue being naked in front of strangers, so if she told me to take them off I'd have been happy too. However, I discovered how oddly violating it is when you're lying on your stomach with your eyes closed, listening to the plinky plonky music and a stranger suddenly yanks down your pants and starts messaging your butt cheeks. Still the best massage I've ever had. My girlfriend does waxing as well as massaging. She was being very careful waxing this woman's crack as she had a big mole right near her butthole. She accidentally got too close and ripped it off. It wasn't a mole, it was a chunk of crap. Enjoy your career. My friend made a girl have an orgasm during a massage, in the middle of the class, and he always felt uncomfortable when he would leave men with raging erections. I guess he was good at what he did. Subway workers of Reddit, what's the grossest sandwich you've seen or did had to make? When I worked at Subway there was a family that came in, the parents and their two sons. They would always order meatball footlongs and want all the veggies twice. You could never pack on enough lettuce either. You couldn't cut the dang thing. Good luck trying to smash it down enough to even wrap. That times for every time they came in, plus a ton of mayo. We used to do rock paper scissors in the back to see who had to deal with them. The guy had some kind of intellectual disability or something. He ordered a footlong meatball sub with extra marinara and extra every other sauce, which at the time would have been yellow mustard, brown mustard, ranch, chipotle, light mayo, regular mayo, yes, both, and sweet onion. He had a companion with him who kept asking him are you sure you want all that? That doesn't sound like it will taste very good are you sure but he was not deterred. The companion came back up to me later to thank me and let me know he ate the entire thing and loved it. 
this mom and her kid would come into my store every Wednesday and after the mom ordered something normal, the kid, who would always order himself, would ask for a plain sandwich, the first time I had to ask, but after that, every Wednesday when I saw them walking up I'd start working on that little guy's toasted bread and ketchup sandwich, super gross sandwich order, but those two customers were always a bright spot in my week. Double salami and pretty much all the oregano in the house. No cheese. No sauce. No shame. Behold the power of an old Italian man's soul. Only mayonnaise. Toasted. It wasn't the grossest sandwich. It was just the way she ate it. Tuna with ketchup. She then removed her false teeth, licked the tuna out and left the bread for us to clean up. My old boss took a trip to Hawaii to surf. Rented a jeep and ordered enough $5 footlongs to last the week that's all he ate all week apparently. Stored them in the jeep. No cooler. No refrigeration. All of those sandwiches were gross after a week in Hawaii temperatures. I don't know if they still do the seafood salad sandwich, but when I was a teenager I had to prep that crap in the morning. It's a 5 pound bag of imitation crab and a gallon bag of mayonnaise, mixed with my gloved hands. The smell and texture was awful. Anyways, had an elderly gentleman come in on my Saturday shifts and get the seafood salad foot long, double meat with shredded cheese. Toasted, old guy tipped a dollar every time. Some lady asked me to scoop out all of the bread, leaving just the crusty shell, and fill it with mayonnaise. It was like a disgusting cream puff. It is time for this story to be told. When I was a stupid high school boy, my buddy Rob and I used to go to the same subway at least a couple of times a week. There were two workers there, Mary and Roland, and whenever they transferred, we'd follow them to some other subway, because they were nice to us and sometimes gave us deals. One day I went in there and said, Roland, I bet you can't make me a sub that I can't eat. Roland goes in the back and comes back with two big freaking slabs of processed turkey. When you order a normal sub, that turkey is all sliced up. This was not sliced. It was just a goddamn brick of meat about an inch and a half thick. He loaded it up with all the regular toppings, no screaming hot sauce or anything, and said, there you go. Stupid high school boy me thought, this fool doesn't know who he's dealing with. I ask for an edible, and he gives me extra meat. 10 minutes and this thing is down the belly hatch. But a strange thing happens when you have to chew large portions of processed meat for a long time. You realize why they slice it up like that. It's because it's full of big disgusting chunks of gristle, blobs of fat, probably a beak or two, whatever made it into the turkey blender before it was pressed into a can. I can't remember whether I puked. Stupid high school boys puke a lot, but I do remember that I didn't even finish 6 inches of that sucker. God bless Roland, wherever he ended up, not only did he win the bet, he made a sandwich that still haunts my dreams 25 years later. Okay, check it, dude comes in like he's never been to a subway before, which that's okay, I'm ready to help, but he also acts like he has never had nor heard of a sandwich before. He gets the honey oat foot long, and that is where the logic stops. This joker asks what's good, and I tell him that I like the meatball marinara. He gets that, with extra marinara mind you, and before I can even ask him about his cheese choice, he points to the tuna and asks CWW, what's that I tell him what it is. He takes a good minute to think, and then he's like okay, I'll get that too. I pause for a second trying to process what he is asking me. Let me tell you I take the title sandwich artist seriously, and I did not feel like an artist while spreading paste tuna onto a marinara soaked honey oat loaf. I felt dirty. So to follow this nutball's train of logic, he has me extra toasted without cheese, take it out, and he says two words that shook me to my core, honey mustard, I am an honest man, I like to think, a good man if I'm being generous, but I cannot think that any god wouldn't make me suffer for helping craft this abomination, I squeeze the bottle and give him three thick lines of that tangy god sauce, he says more, I give him more, I close it with an audible squelch emitting from the sub, I wrap it up, and when I look up to accept his money I see his face. I see the excitement of a child about to go on a roller coaster for the first time, the guy's giddy, practically electrified with glee. I give him his foot long effigy to sin incarnate, he leaves the store, and I go in the back to slice bell peppers and try to forget. Meatballs, teriyaki chicken, 
and salsa with all the salad and all the sauces. No he wasn't high and he ordered it like 3 more times. When I worked at Panera, a customer once ordered a tuna salad sandwich on a chocolate chip bagel. For breakfast, egg whites, American and shredded cheddar a double portion of seafood salad, toasted, oil, no vinegar. It's healthy because egg whites. Had a few people that would order a double meat tuna sub and then want a ton of mayo added to it. Those sandwiches were already half mayo to begin with. I felt fatter just touching the thing. Also, another store under the same owner would regularly get people wanting cookies added to their subs. I'm pretty sure I was told the reasoning was that they thought it would count as a topping so they wouldn't have to pay for the cookies. Not an artist but was in line behind a guy. He got a chicken bacon ranch, double meat and cheese. Nothing weird yet. No toppings. Whatever. A lot of meat and cheese. All the sauces. WTF. The subway gal put a little line of each one on. Not good enough. We wanted to drench in every sauce. He got a faint glob for each sauce plus had their mad marinara. When they tried to close the sandwich and cut it, it was oozing. He grabs it and sits down. Basically slurping the freaking thing. I was planning on eating there but just couldn't. Got it to go and got the frick out of there. One of the grossest things I have ever seen. There was this guy that I think was messing with me and the other girl there but he ordered a foot long wheat bread with every flavor of cheese we had on it along with every condiment we had then the man used a ketchup bottle he brought himself and used it all. His friends recorded him eating it and I feel sick remembering it. Obligatory I don't work at Subway but I do work at a place that serves subs. Had an order a while back for a chicken finger sub with hot sauce, tuna, pickles, and double mayo. Felt like I was preparing for a reckless eating video. They were hungover. This lady would come in every day and ask for a 6 inch honey oat and made it very apparent that she wanted the bread soft. She had me put triple American cheese on it and 3 tomatoes, and an ungodly amount of mayonnaise on it. That's it. Made me cringe watching her eat it. Hated that lady. Pickles, seafood salad, corn, bacon bits, olives, sauerkraut, barbecue sauce. What on earth are you thinking mate? Not Subway, but in high school I worked at Hoji Yogi which does sandwiches and teriyaki bowls. I had a teenage girl come in and ask if I could make a foot long pickle sandwich. So I took a small handful of pickles and spread them out over the bread. Can I have more she asked. I took another, slightly larger handful of pickles and spread them over the bread. Can I have more she asked again. I dug into the bin with both hands and spread two heaping piles of pickles across the bread which was now soaking in vinegar. Is that enough I asked. I thought I was calling her bluff. Yeah, that's good. I folded the sandwich down as best I could. The pickles were stacked too high. I rang her up for a veggie sandwich, watched her take it to her table, and sit down to eat the whole thing. The bread was dark and soggy. Any pickles that fell out she was quick to scoop up. It was gross, but fascinating at the same time. Here's a few I can remember. This obese guy would walk in a couple times a week, take the cold cut combo. He asks for a ton of lettuce followed by the largest amount of mayonnaise you can imagine. He always emptied half the cup of mayo. It was probably more than enough mayo for 12-15 average customers. He then added a few other vegetables and was good to go. It always made me sick making him such a sandwich as I knew I was killing him. Then, I've seen two normal looking persons take every single sauce on the menu. Not like a very thin line or anything. Extra dosage of every sauce while looking at me to make sure I put enough of each. At Subway, you can ask to grill vegetables with your bread cheese meat. I always grilled onions and peppers with mine for the flavor. Multiple people were doing this. Then this guy walks in and asks me to grill his sub at the complete end after asking for lettuce, pickles and sauce on it. This guy ordered a wrap with 8 portions of bacon and 2 portions of steak. Cheese over the entire thing. No vegetables and toasted. Yup, a toasted wrap. Foot long subway club. I think double meat. Wanted extra cheese x4 so they could have every single type of cheese on it. Every single vegetable. Every sauce. And I mean every sauce. Even mayo and light mayo together. Olive oil. Vinegar. Salt and pepper. Oregano. Parmesan cheese. Not only was it disgusting, but it was a pain to actually wrap the thing up. I once had to make someone a black olive sandwich. 
like three handfuls of only black olive on Italian bread with extra olive juice. I ordered that once. I was 6 and it was my first time at Subway so I panicked and refused anything other than black olives. This is hands down the worst sandwich I ever made. Dude comes in, orders a 6 inch cold cut, white bread. As I'm cutting the bread, he asks for mayo on both sides before the meat. So I do the old back end forth, both sides. He looks at me and says not enough man, I want like an inch on both sides. I used about a half bottle of mayo on that sandwich, put the meat on and closed it up. He told me at the till that he lets it sit in the fridge for 3 days before he eats it. I worked at a sub shop in AZ and this wasn't really gross, just peculiar. A girl would come in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and order a 16 inches sub with all the white cheese, except yellow, and a 16 inch sub with 4 orders of bacon and no bread. I thought she was joking when she first came in, but I was subsequently reprimanded by the supervisor for laughing. Meatballs, extra tuna. I was very new at the time so I didn't realize till I got to the till that such a monstrosity isn't on the menu. I had this one guy that would come in frequently and ask for what he referred to as a salty sardine surprise which was Italian bread with both sides totally covered in salt, with an entire can of sardines between them. We used to get into a lot of fights over the sardines, since we didn't have them, but one day I bought a can of sardines just to take him by surprise. He didn't react in the slightest when I made the sandwich. The next day I go to my cousin's deli and he tells me the same guy came in that morning ranting about the best salty surprise I ever had it. Reverse. My friend used to work at a chain sub shop, and I love mayo. To frick with him, I would always just ask for unreasonable amounts of mayonnaise on my stuff, cause he thinks it's gross. He was about to ship out to the military, so before he left, I had him make me a meatball sub but with no red sauce. All the red sauce had to be replaced with mayonnaise. He cringed. I ate it. It was a good day. A lady in front of me orders a salad. So far so good. Nothing to worry about. Then she says she would like it plain. The worker asks what she would like on her salad. She doesn't want lettuce, onions or spinach. She orders one slice of ham in the middle of the plastic bowl. Then she asks for pickles. The worker puts a handful on but the lady wants more. I'm perplexed and lying behind her and it's starting to get hard to keep a straight face. The worker piles on another two full handfuls of pickles on. The lady pipes up. Can I just get a little more? The worker gives her a wary eye but submits and adds one final handful to her bowl. She proceeds to pay, her final order being one slice of ham and the remainder of the bowl filled with pickles. Used to work at a sub shop local to New England, and this guy used to come in and have us scrape the grill with this blade that got the burnt meat and cheese off the grill. He would then have us top his steak and cheese with that crust. He would say it's all flavor. Dude comes into my work every so often for a flatbread foot long, one egg white and one egg yellow. Add double meat tuna, toasted and nothing else. I do not work, nor have ever worked at a subway. However I was the main instigator in what I deem one of the most memorable sandwiches of my life. It was in my late teens and with a bunch of mates. I was last in queue behind them, and with something to prove I decided to go the whole hog and more. The poor girl behind the counter asked what I wanted. Footlong. Italian herbs and cheese. She bought over the sad looking baguette and asked what filling I was after. All meats, no fish. I thought I was prepared for it, but my god there were a lot of meats that I was not aware of. Meatballs, chicken fillet, pork riblet, salami etc I was ready for but it just kept coming. Shaved meats, dice meats, poultry, lamb, cow in more ways than I could imagine. It ended up being so full she couldn't close it. I topped with a proportionally pitiful mayonnaise and barbecue sauce. It ended up being around $50 NZ. One of the worst things I think I've ever done, in more ways than one. However I do not regret it, I am now a vegan. My quota was reached. We had a guy who ordered the seafood, gross in its own right, and would then ask for black pepper. He would then say, put pepper on until I say stop. He would let you shake on pepper for a good 15-30 seconds. The sub was just a pile of mayo and soot. Surprised I never sneezed. Maybe that's what he wanted. I worked at Jimmy John's but this one dude would order a garguchuan, which is all the meats but bacon, no veggies, 
extra extra mayo and bacon like every day. I'm honestly expected him to just drop dead of a heart attack one day after eating one of those bad boys. Not a subway worker, but ordered enough weird sandwiches to be, rightfully, judged. My brother and I used to have this ongoing competition where we would order the grossest sandwiches and see who could actually eat the most of it. Whoever ate the least had to pay for both sandwiches the next time we came to Subway. The grossest sandwich I ever ordered was a foot long with that weird artificial fish and mayo stuff. Spinach, olives, tomatoes, bacon, avocado, honey mustard and barbecue sauce. To be honest, it was actually pretty good despite the texture, so I won that competition. I worked in NW Iowa, very agricultural, lots of cold cut trio on white bread with a crap ton of mayo and that's IT, I hated making it, I did not graduate from the art academy of subway sandwiches to unwrap turkey plastic and splodge mayo up and down the block. You have been visited by the hangover papa, comment do a recover. Papa Anna, you will never suffer from hangover again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.